and about 15 minutes later I kind of had like this cold chill run down my spine like something telling me to look at the cameras okay and I look at the camera and in the third floor vending area there is just on the edge of the camera is a I don't want to call it a shadow person, but a black silhouette that is clearly someone standing like with a hood on okay. just to the point where I can see them, but they're slightly out of being able to completely tell that somebody's there. storyteller escorting you through the night lighting the way warding off thieves ghosts demons and other oddities along the journey his companions would often share with him the most curious of stories that he'd record in his codex perhaps you just might find yourself traveling with the codega and sharing one of yours everyone and welcome back to Codega's Codex of Curiosities. Of course, I'm your guide, Rai, and I'll be taking you on another curiosity. And tonight we got a really strange one and I'm really looking forward to it. To get into it a bit is this uh, probably something you've never heard of before. Some crazy high strangeness. That's what I'll call it, some high strangeness. And so it's going to be really exciting um i know a little bit about it you know he has told me a little bit but uh i'm looking forward to him retelling his experience again and uh before we jump into the tonight's uh, interview i want to thank everybody who's liked and subscribed and commented on my videos it, you know things are really picking up and i really appreciate that so thank you um i do have a patreon out now as well so i have two levels one is a five dollar monthly one where it's a you know, I'm going to give you a shout out and it's just a general thanks for helping me out on my show. Uh, the other one is a $25 monthly. And what that does is, of course, it gets you the shout out, but that's not, you know, that's not worth it for 25 bucks. So what else do you get? Well, throughout the year, you'll be getting a coffee mug. Yeah, that's OK. You'll be getting a T-shirt. You'll be getting a long sleeve T-shirt and you'll be getting a canvas bag as well. So if you go check out Patreon, I'm going to have it in the show notes and you can find that there. Now, also, I just want to say if you have not gone onto my Facebook, you know, go to the Facebook, send me a friend request. I'm OK with that. Uh, just let me know that, hey, that you're a real person, because I, I'm sure everyone is beginning inundated with these bots or these scammers. And they're like, oh, have I got a deal for you? No, I don't want any of that. Just say, hey. I'm a viewer, I'm a subscriber of Codega's Codex of Curiosities, and you're in. No problems. Um, now, if you yourself have had any experiences, I want you to send me an email to codexofcuriosities at gmail.com. Let me know what's going on and uh, tell me a little bit of a uh, high strangeness. Let me know. And is, if it's enough to be on the show, by all means, or if it's just a short one, um, I'm going to be doing some narrations coming up soon where I'm going to narrate some of the shorter experiences so that you can get yourself on as well. All right. And um, just trying to think, make sure also share the show. That really, really helps. Uh, so I want you to share the YouTube channel, share your favorite episode with, you know, any of your friends or if you have any friends that you think would be interested, share them the channel. Tell them to join in. And, uh, you know, I'm sure there's something on there that they'll enjoy. Now, one last thing, if you are listening, you are getting only part of the Codex uh, of Curiosities. There is so much more. I do a lot more uh, content. So on Tuesdays, I do the 
Supernatural Town Hall Sessions with Matt Emps from Planet 412 and Andrew and JC from Sasquatchers. We always usually have a special guest on. And we pay, usually pick a topic. This, uh, you know, and yeah, I was going to say this coming up week, but this will be long past when this uh, by the time this goes. But yeah, we usually pick a topic have discussions about it. You know, the live chat's going, um, our, uh, our viewers are commenting on what's going on. It's, it's pretty fun. So one last thing before we uh, bring on our guest. Click that like. Yeah. If you're new here, subscribe and have the bell hit for notifications to stay up to date on all the new content. Perfect. And without further ado, I'm going to bring our guest on. All right, Andy, welcome to Codega's Codex of Curiosities. Uh, it's my pleasure to have you on. It's a pleasure. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. I know that we had a you know a bit of trouble getting together, but I appreciate your patience and thanks for everything, Rye. I, I, I just I appreciate the opportunity. Not a problem. Not a problem. You know, um, yeah, I, I try to be pretty flexible. Uh, you know, th that's just the way it goes. It's It's difficult, you know, trying to you know, trying to organize schedules and things come up sometimes. It happens. It happens. So, so Andy, why don't you tell our viewers or and our listeners a little bit about yourself and then we're going to go into, um, I don't know what to call it. Your high strangeness, your experience. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. I know you're trying to open it up and it's definitely, uh, different. it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. Even I have a hard time, you know, at the end of the day, I guess your viewers can decide because, you know, you can, I don't know, I guess the, <laughs> you can write, it's, it is, it's just something. And, you know, it's stuck with me my entire life and it's, it's definitely not, you know, one of those, it's not like I was young. It's not like I was on drugs. It just, it's one of those things that you just really can't explain and then everybody else in the world wants to give you an explanation and it just really doesn't resonate so you wind up even more confused at the end of the day yeah and like we we're saying earlier i find like a lot of people want to try to explain away um a lot of other people's experiences and probably including yours they try to like kind of discredit no no that was just this or that was just that and you're like no, no, it's not. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's strange when people do that. And like you said, you've already kind of heard what's going on. And there's kind of pieces along the way. I don't know. It's really up for, I guess, the uh, everybody else to decide. Because to this day, I have my opinion. And I'll mm -hmm. share it when we get to the end. But, I mean, it's, you know, it's been 13, 14 years later now. And I'm you know, just as confused as I was <laughs> while it was happening to me. So fair, fair enough. So, okay. So why don't we put that out to our listeners and viewers? If you have an idea, you want to take a shot at what this is, leave it in the comments. Um, of course, Andy's going to tell us what he believes it is. And I usually go with the own personal experience, but sometimes someone will come in with something else and you're like, that's a possibility, you know, because I, I know our listeners and viewers aren't going to discredit you. You know, they're going to try at least try to give you some, some, real answers not saying oh you, you would just imagine it or something like that you're not going to get that here um do you want me just to kind of dive in a little and explain maybe some sure just, sure or, or stage yeah, yeah why not bit? let's just go right into it um and I, I don't mean to like interject during the stream or whatever but where where do we stand should i say where i was or by all yeah it, it's up to you like you can okay tell that yeah yeah i'm completely okay with you if okay. you want to give out as much detail as you want you know places okay. if you want to keep all the names the same that's fine if you want to change them by all Got means it. you can change them so um i guess to set the stage at the time i was a, a student mm -hmm. at um central michigan university um and i had been there for two or yeah about two years and everyone had gone home for the summer so i didn't have a place to live because you get booted out of the dorms okay and i was in this position where i needed to i had a job at the time and i was working as a night auditor at a hotel 
I won't say oh. the name of the hotel, but a quick question. Night auditor. What is a night auditor? Is that like a watchman kind of thing? Or? So at the, it, in this particular hotel, yeah. um, near the soaring Eagle casino, <laughs> <laughs> but at this particular hotel, uh, I would be the only employee in the hotel. Okay. From 11 p.m. until 9 a.m. Okay. So it was, you know, my job to take care of any employee needs, check everyone in, make sure things are clean, uh, put the continental breakfast out in the morning. But my main, the number one thing that I was there to do was at 3 a.m. like clockwork, it was my responsibility to send in the daily audit to the uh, corporate resort company so that they could, you know, see the profits and everything for the day. And that's what the night auditor is supposed to do. So you, you know, like you can do whatever you want while you're there, you know, do your job. And then, but the one thing you can't miss is at 3 a.m., you know, before 3 a.m. So it has to be sent before 3 a.m., too corporate or you know you wind up getting rid up or there's a problem and then that's the issue comes in you gotta make sure that that's set. but um I'm getting ahead of myself because when you and I got introduced uh, you read what I had written about what occurred at the hotel but I wanted to jump a little bit in the past because for sure about two and a half weeks prior to the incident that occurs at the hotel uh, i was working out my living situation and i had met an older gentleman through one of my classes who'd owned a trailer um in the neighboring county and he was he had gotten a new job down in the toledo area And, you know, we were talking about, I I was in a pickle. I needed somewhere to stay. I didn't have much money. And we had worked out an agreement where he was going to let me stay in his trailer while he was down working in Toledo for a few weeks. uh, If I'd watch his dog, uh, Chief, which was like a big fat golden retriever. (laughs) And... I was like, you know, bingo, this is great. So I just have to give him a hundred bucks and I can watch the dog. I've got a place to stay. It's fantastic. So, uh, you know, school clears out for summer. I wind up securing a place to stay. And unfortunately, you know, I didn't have, everyone was gone. (laughs) Excuse me. And I didn't have like any friends left in the area. So it was just me. And I worked Sunday, Monday, Tuesdays and alternated Wednesdays, Wednesday nights. So, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and that alternate Wednesday, I was just alone by myself, left to my own devices in this trailer where you know it's just like a single wide with a single bedroom i was sleeping on the couch and he had his son there you know while we were getting acquainted but once they left it was just me you know i didn't sleep in his bedroom i just slept on the couch and it was like a very lonely you know just kind of situation where yeah I, i can understand you know like everybody has left and it's kind of i don't want to say you feel abandoned but somewhat it is like that, you know, it's just, well, let it's me like put it this way. Down. I was able to pretty much memorize how to train your dragon and all the lines from back to, I could watch it with my eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> That's how many times I watched it. But um, yeah, so uh, I'll get into the more serious stuff here. And I was having these issues where I was having these, I had always kind of had some sleep paralysis issues and, no entities or anything serious, but, you know, just struggling and pressure and in a way, lucid dreaming, I would become kind of aware. I was explaining to you earlier about this term I like to use called like micro sleeping. And it's where you find yourself asleep and 
maybe people have experienced this when you were younger and you like go through a day of school or you like wake up and you're like, Oh, I'm awake. And then you do something. And then all of a sudden you're waking up again and you're consciously becoming aware of the fact that you're asleep while you're waking up. And as I was dealing with this, I was, sorry, I missed something. There's this, so that trailer uh, was on a plot of land. The neighbor was about a quarter mile to the right and another trailer, a quarter mile to the left and about by uh, maybe a hundred yards behind the property is this like wooded kind of forest area. And I was having these dreams that I was like running around or trapped or in that forest behind the house. It wasn't anything spectacular, nor was it really a forest. It was just, you know, like a, maybe like a township plot of woodland area and like, maybe the most dangerous critter you'd supposedly find in there is a coyote or something. Okay. Yeah. But those dreams started changing and I was starting to wake up with like scratches and hives on my body. And they were like, like puffy, irritated splotches. And, you know, after talking to my mom and whatever, you know, it's the mattress, it's the couch you're sleeping on, whatever. But I, you know, slept on a couch my whole life as far as I'm concerned. And it, some, you know, it was just something that wasn't making sense. And on the night of the, you know, first incident, I had actually had the day off and I was in the shower and it must have been. I don't know, like 8.30 or 9 o'clock that night. And it was pouring, you know, raining cats and dogs outside at the time. And I'm in the shower and there is this like loud, like crashing noise. And it's, you know, it scared the, uh, the heck, I, sh- I can't cuss, right? You can um, cuss. You can cuss. It scared the shit out of me. Yeah. And, you know, I throw the towel around my waist and I come outside of the door and head into the little family family room area. And the trailer door is like flapping, you know, wide open and clipping and clapping. And the door was always like a little shoddy. If you gave it like a good push, like if somebody wanted to come in, they could come in. Like if you grabbed it and honked on it, it, it would open up. So it was already a little bit of a shoddy door. But that, you know, went, that in and of itself wasn't the real issue. The problem was that I didn't know where Chief was, which is the dog that I was dog sitting. And oh, I no. look around the house and he's he's not there. He's gone. So I'm like, you know, Jesus Christ, I got to find, you know, the guy that Bob, you know, Bob, I got to find Bob's his name was Bob. I got to yeah. find Bob's uh, dog. So I threw on a quick pair of shorts and a shirt and I grabbed, there's like a flashlight by the door and grabbed a flashlight and I, I run outside and uh, there's like a couple of steps down. There's a fire pit and I'm looking around and chief has like this bell on his collar. Okay. So it's, it's pretty distinguishable. Like he's kind of got a lumbering pace, but it like, you know, You know, and he's not fast, so it's not like he could have sprinted off to God knows where. He was like a 14-year-old fat golden retriever, you know, (laughs) stinky the whole nine yards. He's just a big dog. But that bell, you know, oh, sorry. You could always, like, hear it. You know, it's like, you know, ching, ching, ching. It just, every time he walked, no matter where you were, it made sense. And I could hear it clear as day. And it was, you know, dark. And I, I don't know if like some I don't know where all your viewers live, but for the people that understand the kind of dark that happens when you're like like in the real dark, like no street lights, no nothing. It's just the only light was the outside light. So I've got like maybe 50 feet of light and beyond that shield of light is a miasma of, you know, darkness and the flashlight is you know uh maybe a a small helping hand but i can hear the dinging of chief's collar and i'm you know at a light jog running towards the woods behind the trailer yelling his name and looking around 
and I was just, I don't know, maybe a little bit faster than a jog because, you know, it's pouring rain. I didn't want to be out there any longer than I had to be. And I can still hear that his bell the whole time. And as I'm running down and it's dark and scary, I, you know, it's a little tough to like put it into words, but I just, then I woke up. Okay. Not oh. like a dream. I woke up on the ground because I had been clotheslined by something while I was running as fast as I could towards the woods. And it, and, and, you, know, and you have been out in this area before. Oh, plenty of times. And there was nothing, there's nothing in this area. There, where I was in location to the trees, there are no trees. But okay. when I hit what I hit and came to, I was telling myself, you know, shit, I just ran into a tree branch because it caught me right at nose level. My nose was busted up. I had a couple of cuts on my face. And I can't tell you how long I was on the ground for. The rain yeah. was falling on my face when I was coming to. And uh, I wake up and I'm, you know, looking around and I, I found the, the flashlight and I, you know, can't hear the ringing anymore and it's raining and now I'm hurt and I'm, you know, upset. And it was like, this is you know fucking horrible. And I started walking back to the trailer. And when I get in up to the trailer, the door is closed. And when I open the door, um, chief is on his dog bed completely dry not wet at all what? and uh, my face is beyond mangled i'm you know fucked up i had to shower again to clean myself up the dog doesn't have a drop of water on him and i know people will be like oh maybe you didn't search the trailer hard enough i tore that place apart looking for the dog and it's not it's not a, a chihuahua. Like it didn't hide yeah, under. It, exactly. It's not it, hiding it's, underneath it's, the bed. Or it's something. a 95 pound dog. It, you know, it doesn't have, it can't hide under the bed or this or that. It was yeah. right on his dog bed. Like he had never moved. What? I know. And that was kind of like. The precursor. This, yeah. Well, this part of the story, I, I just, I think that whatever occurred out there mm -hmm. is related to what we're going to talk about next because it's hard to you know again that trailer it was like prairie there was nothing out there that could yeah. have hit me other than a person or you know a what, thing yeah the thing i'm going to talk about oh shit but that was you know what had and and you know if you want to look at this as a skeptic then I think, go ahead. Maybe there was a tree and I didn't see it, or uh, maybe, maybe I tripped and hit my head on a rock or whatever. But you can. Uh, this is, you know, as I ended up going on and talking to some, you know, professionals later on about sleep and this and that, they used that fear that started because of what happened during that incident as a pinpoint to explain some of what would occur as we move further on. Okay. But um, we can go ahead and fast forward a hair here and sure, yeah, let's jump into <clears throat> it. So, so that happened. Uh, what was the day that that happened on? Uh, do you remember? Do you recall that? I don't know, like an actual, not not like, date, but let, let's say it uh, was like the this was a Thursday, and then I I have yeah, to it would have been on. a it would have it would have been a Wednesday or a Thursday. Okay, but what happened at the hotel? We have to go like another two weeks. Okay, for okay what happens at the hotel no problem and at the hotel um again i was working as a night auditor and i was I, I worked at the front desk and customers would come through two sets of double doors and i'll try to help visualize this for everyone as you walked in you go through the double door two sets of double doors go about 20 feet and to your left is the desk that i'm at and I'm at a chest high, you know, nook. And that nook is shaped like a rectangle with a divider down the center and a door at the end. So I was able to sit in like the back corner and up in the, I'd be in one corner where if you came to the desk, you wouldn't be able to see me because I'm sitting over here. You'd have to like lean over and look to see me. 
And up on the wall is security cameras that give me a view of the entire hotel and all the corners and the vending areas and outside so I can see everything. So I would you know, be sitting there and watching Netflix or playing World of Warcraft. And then if somebody came to the desk, they would be like, hey, is anybody here? Or they'd ring my bell and I could walk up. And then back in that nook is a door that led into the office and the office took you back out into the hallway. But um, I would sit there and I would watch Netflix or, you know, game and do whatever until guests came in because it was late and I usually worked weekdays. So, you know, it's not like I was working Friday or Saturday during football games or anything. So most of the time I wouldn't have any more than, I mean, unless it was a, a, some kind of crazy holiday, really, I'd only have like three, four or five guests in the hotel at a time. It, it was pretty quiet. Oh, that, that's a, uh, that's a nice, easy, uh, easy job. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm yeah. not saying it's easy job, but I'm like, it's, it was, it was pretty yeah. cushy. And like, yeah. as a student, you know, coming in at 11 o'clock, you know, I'm already, I had classes, I tried to sleep or I didn't sleep and I, sleep's a big theme to all of this when we get mm -hmm. to the end here. But you know, that is, yeah, it was, it's a good job. And uh, in all honesty, there were some instances where I would go in the office in the back and hopefully, you know, they never hear about this, but I would take a comforter and a pillow and I would take the sign that says I'm currently away from the desk and set it on there. I'm helping someone else. And I would go in the little office and sleep and put the phone right on my ear. So if someone came to the desk, it would ring and I could wake up and, you know, quickly jawn over there because I, I wasn't sleeping a whole lot. <laughs> You know, but again, I don't want to make this whole thing all about sleep because, you know, it is a crazy thing. But fair enough. So the night that everything goes down, um, I was at the desk like normal. Uh, I'd gotten in at 11, checked in, saw the day shift. They took off. It was maybe midnight or so. And it's again, uh, it was raining really hard and those front doors were a little shoddy, you know, they'd open every once in a while and nobody would come through. But uh, I was sitting there. Um, I was either playing Netflix or like I said, you know, messing around with World of Warcraft or something. And I hear the automatic doors opening. So I get up and walk over, you know, the three steps to the area where they can see me. And I'm looking, getting ready to greet the customer and there's nobody there but i also had that that distinct um feeling you get that like ch that gust of wind or that you know that chill when okay. someone's kind of briskly passing you by yeah and yeah. you know it kind of shoots past me and from the doors the double doors it's about 50 feet till you get to the elevators and the okay. elevator dings and opens up on the first floor. So I'm, you know, standing there kind of like, Hey, this is, you know, kind of weird. And the elevator doors close and I'm standing there watching the elevator and it's going up. It goes to the second floor and then it goes to the third floor. And I was able to look on the cameras to see if anybody got out and the doors open up and there's, you know, nothing. It was weird that that took place. And yeah, that, you know, that was that. It just was a weird thing. So I went back to uh, hanging out and watching Netflix. And about 15 minutes later, I kind of had like this cold chill run down my spine, like something telling me to look at the cameras. Okay. And I look at the camera and in the third floor vending area, there is just on the edge of the camera is a, I don't want to call it a shadow person, but a black silhouette that is clearly someone standing like with a hood on. Okay. Just to the point where I can see them, but they're slightly out of, being able to completely tell that somebody's there and i'm like you know what the heck's this asshole doing you know it's late and you know i watch him for a minute or two and i'm like all right i'm gonna pop up there and see what's going on 
So I go up the stairs and I get to the third floor. And when I get into the vending area, uh, there's no one there. And there is a puddle on the ground. And it is like a stinky um, black sludge. Really? Uh, it's, I don't want to make it sound like oil because it had a, a still a watery, you know. Yeah. Um, and like it was, it was watery consistency. It wasn't like thicker or anything. Right. Like but it, okay. you know, for anyone that knows what like death smells like, it was the smell of like, like, you know, rigor mortis or like a dead deer or just like, you know, something clearly, it smelled like something died. It was wow. very, very powerful, very disgusting. And I was trying to rationalize what it was. And I figured that what must have happened was that the ice machine, I thought like maybe some oil or something had come out of the ice machine. Yeah, we, like, you, you got to, ra- you know, like in the moment you're trying to rationalize what just happened. You know, and, and it wasn't. To- yeah. It wasn't like a, it wasn't a huge puddle, but it wasn't a small puddle either. It was like I had to go get a mop and, and clean it up. I couldn't just leave it there. Like someone could fall or, you know, and also stank horribly. But uh, maybe if I was to give like dimensions to it, it was like maybe like five by eight. Give okay. or take so, on there. Okay, yeah, that's, that's a fair big. size. I was thinking smaller, but yeah. It was. And I, I go and get the mop and get the mop bucket and clean it up and put it squeeze it out into the mop bucket and i put it back into the janitor's closet and went back downstairs and you know was like hit you know that was fucking weird Mm -hmm. um and i was just you know i put my show back on or again i can't remember exactly what i was doing when i was down there but for this instance you know i put my show back on netflix and Mm -hmm. I can't exactly begin to tell you again, I start losing track of where the time is in all of this, but what felt like another 15 minutes to 30 minutes goes by. And I had just glanced back up at the cameras and that same motherfucker is standing in the same place he was in the cameras. And, at and, this and point, just, just to clarify something, so when you came back down, there was no one there. No, there and was then, nothing. Yeah, and then like 15 minutes later, that's when you kind of like got an urge to look at the cameras and you can see this yeah, yes. thing. Guy. And I peek back up and again, there's this, you know, clear silhouette of a person like somebody's, you know, I mean, I was a little at this point, I'm kind of a little unnerved. It was starting to scare me a little bit. And again, I'm the only person there. So if it's a joke or whatever, you know, it was funny the first time, but it ain't so funny now. And I see him again and I'm like pretty determined to go up there and figure out what it is. So I went back upstairs and when I got back upstairs, that puddle is on the floor again, almost the exact same size, the same stink, the same, the exact same way it was 15 or 20 minutes earlier was the exact same way it was filthy and stinking and there was nobody there and i was like you know you know something's got it what the fuck's going on uh you know if if the ice machine's leaking you know there's a, clearly a problem here you know I, I don't think i unplugged it i might have but i ended up getting the mop again i cleaned it and i was like you know this is <laughs> filthy clean everything up and put the mop back in the closet again and went back downstairs and you know i was a little shook up and everything and again at this point i i do my night audit uh it's like four in the morning i don't have any more problems and i'm sitting down watching netflix again and i hear the elevator coming down and it opens up and I get up to greet whoever's going out for their day. And there's no one coming out of the elevator. And just like when I had the experience with what came in again, I got that distinct feeling that something that it came into the hotel was now leaving the hotel and 
the elevator opens, walks past me, and the two double doors open, and whatever it was walks out into the rain. And, and like you could feel like maybe like a, a gust, like wind again, like someone walking past you kind of thing. Like when somebody jostles right by you. Almost, yeah. I almost want to say there was like a physical sensation. Like it's almost like yeah. you could feel it across your chest. Wow. And that in and of itself is what occurred that night. But where things get really um, unfortunate for me is that the following morning I had gotten called in and I was talking with the manager and I was getting wrote up uh, because I had failed to do the night audit the night before. But you said you did it around four in the morning. I did do it at three in the morning. I know I did it. I do it every night. Nothing had changed. I know I did it, but she says I didn't. And she had the cameras to prove it. And she, I told her that I did everything I was supposed to do. And she told me that I need to be getting more sleep because what she saw last night was disturbing. And she played the cameras back for me. And from roughly, I was doing my job normally. Uh, I went upstairs. And when I went upstairs at like roughly 1230, I stood in the vending area uh, for almost two and a half, three hours and never left. What? And, yep. And it was all on camera. She fast forwarded the whole thing. And I thought it was impossible. I, and this is where he, here I am. She's showing me on camera, me, go, you know, doing my job until midnight, one o'clock. And then I go upstairs, which is me th- I was trying to explain to her that's when I went upstairs to check on what was going on. Yeah. But instead I just go upstairs and then I just stood there in the spot that I saw this entity standing in. And I stood there for three hours and missed the night audit. And then at the end of it, I just came back downstairs and did what I was doing normally and laid out the continental breakfast and went home. And she showed it all to me on camera. And I tried to explain to her that there's no way it could have been me because I did the night audit, but I didn't do it. So, I mean. (laughs) Wow. I've got a question here. So when you watch this video, in comparison to the shadow that you saw when you were sitting at your desk looking at the security camera, in comparison to seeing yourself on the video standing there, was it the exact same thing? Or no, you could no. tell it was me. I had a bright blue, okay, button down on with black pants. It was yeah. You could tell it was me. My back was to the camera, but you could yeah. tell it was me. But there's no, you don't see a puddle. There's no me yeah. cleaning anything. There's just me standing just. At, you know, on the corner of the camera shot with my mm-hmm. back turned to the camera for three plus hours. What? And I mean, it was mind bending. Well, it was horrible because over the next couple of weeks, uh, my relationship ultimately soured with the people that were there and the mm-hmm. uh, um, house cleaning staff was like calling me a freak. And I ultimately ended up having to cut ties with the hotel and leave and it, bad. yeah it really sucked but you know and people are like oh can you get the tape i don't have the tape unfortunately i wish it was something i could have gotten but yeah i saw it with my own two eyes and mm-hmm. it was i mean it's it's pretty scary because the way that I remember the night going was no different than any other night I had worked there other than the occurrences that took place with the, so maybe I'll start getting into what I think is happening. For sure. Let's do that. This is, yeah, let's try to unpack this now. And it'll maybe lead up to what happened at the end, which is the worst of all of it. Okay. I think that whatever happened um, at the trailer mm-hmm. was there was something 
maybe in the woods. I refer to it as a doppelganger. I know some people don't. Okay. Or for people that don't know what a doppelganger is, it's something that can, you know, maybe assume your identity or take your place or at least that's how I know it as. Um, But I think something in the woods that night had lured me. And there's a big overarching theme of water here. Yes, yes, definitely. I was thinking the same thing. um, That I think plays into it a lot. And again, as we move forward, I'll explain some more because another puddle comes into all this. But I don't know if that is associated. I haven't done a whole lot of research on all of this because, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I try to put it all behind me. And luckily for, you know, aside from some minor sleep paralysis issues in the last 10 years, I, you know, think I've shook whatever the issue was. Mm -hmm. But I do think that whatever was in the woods that night, either I think something I'd either gotten into me or God, I really, (laughs) that's what I think. I think something, some creature, I know doppelganger might be like physical. Maybe there's like a, a better thing we could use. That's some sort of like spiritual entity entered within you. Like something, demonic force and maybe it was before then because Mm -hmm. i was having those hives and the scratches and i think you know and maybe we can go back to like loneliness and you know i was drinking a little at the time um you know i was alone and i was young and i was depressed and there was nobody around and you know things can feed off of that and i that trailer there was nobody there but me and that old dog which I mean, the dog was old, old. It wasn't like, you know, something in my, he wouldn't detect something as far as I'm concerned. But I think something had, you know, maybe like potentially. Latched, like latched yeah. onto you, started to. I don't think like necessarily got into you up until that point when you ran outside. Like it was, you know, affecting you. But until that one specific night when you ran out there, then that was kind of like, I think that was it. And then the night at the hotel occurs and there's no explanation for, you know, what occurred there, at least not nothing that I agree with, Mm -hmm. but, uh, and we'll move on. We'll we'll have, maybe you and I can hash all this out near the end. But uh, again, if we go another roughly two weeks after the incident at the hotel, I was staying uh, with a friend um, who had been working the day shift. She was still a friend of mine, uh, Rachel. And during that time, uh, I was hanging, sleeping on her couch. I had left Bob's because I, I was with the stuff with the tree, or I mean, uh, the the instance with the everything that took place at the trailer. I was uncomfortable staying there and the hotel and i was now staying with a friend in the more like populous area of downtown mount pleasant and she was letting me stay there and she was telling me that i was having you know night terrors again you know waking up not like waking up or walking around but these like screaming and i was waking up with hives again and still suffering from these night terrors so i was kind of at my wits end and decided to pack up some of my stuff and make the drive home <clears throat> so i got my stuff together and i ended up packing everything up we had been up all night and i said goodbye to her i and load up all my things and i start driving back home and as i'm heading home i had stopped at uh, a michigan rest area and i don't know if for your viewers if anyone knows kind of how michigan rest areas are but they're not like ohio or some of these like big places with gas stations or anything okay it's just like a little log cabin with some brochures a couple vending machines and rest areas that's all it is and then a couple picnic benches and places for people to park and when i pull up there's you know nobody there and it's just me and uh 
I ended up getting out of my car. I had to use the restroom. Uh, so I start walking up to go to the bathroom. And as I'm getting up to the entrance to go inside, a gentleman with his like hood up, I couldn't you know, really see his face or anything, kind of opened the door in front of me kind of rudely and kind of bristled past me. And I was like, oh, you know, fuck you. And he kind of cruises by and I go inside. And the first thing that I saw when I got inside was that there was uh, cones and caution tape and there was water on the floor. Uh, like the women's restroom had spilled out. So there was this, you know, big puddle that had been taped off, caution taped off so people wouldn't slip. Uh, yeah. For the women's room. Um, you know, just c- coincidence. Hmm. So I end up going past that and in, into the men's room. And in the men's room, there are four stalls, and three urinals, on the same wall, you know, one, two, three, four stalls, one, yeah. two, three urinals, and then two urinals behind on the opposite side of those urinals. Okay. And I was using the urinal, you know, I go to take a piss in the urinal that's closest to the at the last stall. Okay. Makes sense. And I'm using the restroom and I hear the door open and kind of glance over my shoulder and the same gentleman who's still, I can't quite. You know, I'm not on like red alert or anything, but I can't, you know, their hoods up. You can't really see their face or anything comes back into the restroom and opens the stall door to the stall closest to the urinal that I'm at. Okay. And goes in and yeah, that's what, you know, you're like, come on, dude. You know, yeah, you the, the, three, it's three the guy other... etiquette. It's the guy etiquette thing. You know, you got to you, you, you need that buffer. It. You need that buffer. That's why I didn't pick the middle urinal. Yes. Exactly. You know, it's like you just, you know, unless it's packed, you know, yeah. move over one. You know, it's a just a courtesy thing. Uh, and I thought it was just weird. And I, I'm using the bathroom and I can hear. Um. Yeah, people are going to say whatever they say in your comments here, but yeah, I can hear course. like a, a very um, like heavy breathing, not like somebody's masturbating, but, you know, like just a deep seated, just kind of an uncomfortable breathing. Yeah. So it, it kind of encouraged me to hustle the fuck up. Yeah. Uh, I finish. I go to the sink. I'm washing my hands. And while I was washing my hands, I caught this. Uh, smell again of like you know death and it made me horribly nauseous um i thought i was gonna pass out but you know i didn't and i'm you know splashing some water on my face and trying to come to and it was i I mean it was disgusting and that's when i heard from the stall behind me um whoever was in there said my name and I'll, you know, they're, they're like, it was compassionate in a way, like, uh, inviting almost. Um, and, and did they just say your first name or did they say just like... my first name? And it was okay. very, uh, it almost created like a compulsion in me to want to like, I felt like I needed to, and you know, just turn around, or maybe they knew me or something. They were like, "Andy, you know, Andy," and I was, you know, a little taken aback by it. And I glanced, and I was like, you know, there's no way, you know, what the, this, what maybe I just heard whatever mm-hmm. that was. It uh, doesn't make sense. Um, I grab some paper towel and I start to, you know, get ready to walk out. And the second time it says my name it's not nice and god this is gonna sound so fucking stupid but i just saw like dune and those people the way they like make you do things when they speak yes 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 the bennies or whatever they're called yeah it says my name again but it was mean and demanding and i 
I, I mean, I just don't know. The last thing that I remember was me like reaching up to the stall to open the door. Holy cow. And when I came to, I was in the driver's seat of my Ford Focus. The car was running. I had like 19 miles to empty. I had pissed my pants and I had vomited on the front of my shirt. Holy and shit. I'm sitting in the front seat of my car and I was, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know how I felt, but I, I remember like crying a little bit and being upset because I didn't really know what happened. But at this point in time, there are now people like multiple vehicles at the rest area, uh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, and I ended up, uh, pulling out of there, I drove a couple miles down the just, road. Just a quick question before we go too far on this one. Um, Time-wise, do you recall how much time was possibly lost? <clears throat> I think it was in the, in the range of like three to five hours. Okay. Okay. And I... I drove up to the, the gas station nearby yeah. and I cleaned the well, I cleaned this myself the best that I could. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, I started the drive home and I remember, um, calling my mom and, you know, trying to explain it without explaining it Yeah, as best I could. Um, and she set me up with an appointment to see some neurologists and some sleep doctors mm -hmm. And, you know, if we get into like the medical aspect of what went on, they tried to tell me that everything that occurred was a result of me sleepwalking. And they tried to say that I had told them, well, yes, I have slept when I was at the hotel or yes, I had fallen asleep at the trailer or yes, maybe I had gone to sleep while I was at the rest area. And they tried to say that all of those things that I'm explaining to you now were just dreams and that they were so vivid, but it doesn't explain me vomiting and pissing myself. Or, I was or, or, or crashing your face well, yeah, into or the having wall, a you know. busted yeah. fucking face, but they're trying to tell me that, that I had gone out and maybe I had bumped into the door or fucked myself up and then woke up outside and then came back in and this, whole thing and they're trying to get me to take like uh, anti-depression and seroqu in these like sleep meds and it, 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 it's just a fucking just... yeah I, I i've got nothing good to say about that at all I, I it's you know it's kind of like yeah this is the world this is the little box that i live in and i'm not able to look outside the box so this your problems have to be associated with this box that i live in there's nothing else but all of that that they that happened afterwards only made the the gap of understanding what really took place that much larger and you know that really fucked me up for a while you know like to this day i can't even stop at a fucking rest area anymore I, so I, I could imagine, you know, like the it's that's like a, a PTSD, you know, it's a I, I've seen a lot of people who have other experiences, like someone has an experience with a Bigfoot in, in the woods. They're like I and they used to go hunting every day. They're like, I stopped going hunting. I haven't gone hunting ever again. You know, like this is this is something that is legitimate. You know, like this this is this is scarred you for sure. But people I've I've heard and I'm not kidding you. Uh, I heard things like maybe you had a stroke and the smell that you were smelling was like a, a, a trigger. And I mean, people, everybody tries to tell you that it's, you know, oh, your brain, there's something wrong with your brain or you weren't sleeping or you were drinking or you were so exhausted from going to classes and then having to work these nights i was a fucking kid and yeah i was amped up on five hour energies and stuff like that but <laughs> the truth is when you're young like that you can go time without sleeping and stuff it's not that yeah. big of a deal 
And yeah, I'm sure some exhaustion may have played into some of what occurred, but nothing changes the fact that whatever I met that night in the woods, whatever it wanted from me or whatever it was trying to do, it got what it wanted. Yeah. And to this day, I still can't reconcile the fact I can't come to the conclusion of what what it was that it wanted or why it wanted what it wanted or what part of me I lost or I still don't know. And it's this, it's fucking me up a little, just even talking about it. it it's it definitely, I, I can extremely, it's a memory you know, I that I it. don't, you know, I hadn't thought about it for like eight years. And then I made that post on Reddit and I was like, people were going on and on about oh. these like horrible things that had happened to them. And I was like, Hey, I had this crazy thing happen to me. Maybe somebody can explain something to me a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know how Reddit goes, but yeah, Reddit is a little toxic as well. You know, that's a, there's some great people on Reddit, but, but there's some yeah, toxic even people. Even then I well. met people that, I mean, that's why I'm in touch with you now. Yeah. And that, you know, it just gave me a chance to, explain some of my story and i heard i've heard some similar stories about these like uh, i some people like called them grays but not like the grays like people refer to as aliens mm -hmm. but like and it's not quite a rake but like a pale like, crawler yeah but they're like these beings that like if you get caught out at night alone, they like may try to entice you to like see them or like whatever was, I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what happened at the hotel. Maybe I slept walk. Maybe that was just some weird experience. I don't care what happened in the trailer. Maybe I went outside and bumped my fucking head or fell down and something crazy happened. But what occurred later on, and I still think all three of these events were correlated, but what happened 100%. when I got to that rest area and I have no explanation for the time loss. And I know that I, you know, I went, I, again, I, 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 I see how it's, there's like this line you can follow that makes it all rational. Yeah or logical, but there was no explanation for why. I mean, sure. I pulled in there because I had to use the bathroom. I fell asleep. I peed my pants. If you want to put it that way, you could say that, but why was I covered in like bile vomit and, you know, just everything was, I, mean, I, it was, I, it was I, I don't think there's any like, in the box kind of explanation uh, for this. Like, you know, if we try, there's no way to explain this away. I think trying to explain this away by saying you're sleepwalking or something like that is more ridiculous than trying to look outside that box and trying to find uh, any real answers out there. You know, it definitely sounds like some sort of entity was like almost like a hitchhiker type entity um, that, you know, jumped into you, some sort of poltergeist type en uh, entity. Um, like this, I will say, like, this is something I have not heard of. I have a lot of friends in this field who I would love to pick their brains and, you know, and, and try to give you some, and I'm going to say rational explanation because that's, you know, like irrational is saying that you're sleepwalking because that's ridiculous. Yeah, I've I never, I've never suffered from sleepwalking in my life. Yeah. Not now, not in the 10 years since then, and not before then. I would, I'd would, i never had instances yeah. of sleepwalking. So it wasn't like a pattern. So these people are trying to tell me that I just all of a sudden picked this up. Mm. You know, and it all took place in the span of a month. Yeah. So, and then I've never slept walk again. I still, to this day, like I was saying before, I don't get the hives or the scratches, yeah. but I still suffer, you know, night terrors and, I, you know, I, but I think that the night terrors I suffer from now are more like PTSD related to what occurred. I don't exactly, I don't I agree with you. And I haven't had whatever, you know, God forbid, whatever it is, is dormant inside me or something, but I have, I've never mm -hmm. had that an instance occur since what took place at the rest area that yeah. has, you know, instilled such fear in me 
as did what occurred over those over over the span of you know those three instances and now i do have a question like i totally believe this is all connected what what's your take on the water what is your take on this like this like this this creature and this death water and this the smell of death and and rotting and despair <laughs> and i know i used i just i all i know is that in every i don't really have anything that i can tell you that's you know got any backing or makes that necessarily makes sense to everyone of course but what i do know is the very first night when this took place, mm -hmm. it was pouring rain. Yes. And not only me, that, you were taking a shower too. You know, like I, I, I didn't even actually think about that. Yeah. Uh, that, that I didn't even put that into my mind. The shower part, I, I didn't even realize that that was happening too. But I mean, I know I was taking a shower, but I didn't associate that with the raining until okay. now. But I mean, you're blowing my fucking mind now. But. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I went outside into the rain. A uh, part of me wants to think that, and it was r pouring rain when I was at the hotel. It was not raining when I pulled up to the rest area, but the puddle and stuff yeah. was there again. And I don't know if... <sighs> I don't know. Even now, I doubt myself sometimes. I, I don't. I, maybe whatever um, this thing was, it used rain or water as a a form of transit. Or yeah. I, I believe so. Water is an intermediary. Like uh, we'll, we'll talk Bigfoot. I know this is this. I don't think this is Bigfoot or anything like that. But Bigfoot uses the creeks and streams as a portal. This is what has been, you know, through the native myths. Some of the native myths say that they use that as a gateway. Um, whenever you have any water, even running water is also you get higher paranormal um, activity. And, and this is a known thing as well. I personally experienced that myself. And then like, well, and then so there's moving water and then there's stagnant water. And I think that mm -hmm. the stagnant water almost, I might be making a, 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 a jump here to make a That's parallel. okay. But I almost think that that stagnant water has an association with like death or um, danger like a swamp or like, you know, like you wouldn't want to get in a dark stagnant swamp in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, again, just trying to rationalize like that stagnant, stinky. I, it's just an association with danger there that, you know, I thinking back should have in my you know, now that I'm older and stuff, I, you think you should be able to sense some sort of red flag, but you know, it was what took place at the hotel is what really rocked me and inspired me to talk more about what happened to me because the other two things, I think if you really wanted if I really wanted to just take the drugs and believe that it happened because of a, a seizure or a stroke or sleepwalking yeah. or anything, I think you could make a case there that it's possible that it happened. But what happened at the hotel and being able to see myself on camera and have vivid memories of doing everything and then I just, something took my, I, I just, I, to this day, think I, something had control of my, my body. And I, I don't know what occurred, you know, when I was, I don't know if people saw me when I was at that rest area in the time that I was out 
from when I went into the restroom to when I got back into the car, I, I never saw any cameras. I'm sure they were there. I'm sure, you know, it's, it's probably impossible to get it now, but maybe somebody could have saw something, but you know, the hotel, it, you know, it rocked me to my core. And yeah, like a, a lot of missing time when people have missing time, it is usually associated, uh, that's kind of synonymous with uh, abduction, a a alien abduction. I'm not saying that this is what it is, but missing time is abduction. And but this seems to have something different. You know, this has a you know a, a different take on it. You know, like there is missing there is this missing time, which is which has been happening three times. You know, when I mean, you, maybe it could have been aliens. I'm not. I won't rule it out, man. I just <laughs> yeah. Uh, whatever, and, and, and I'm not saying that's it. I'm just saying that you definitely have like three instances of missing time where you had, it's you know, you, like ran, a, you ran yeah. into some sort of invisible barrier. You all of a sudden were not you, or or almost a different reality. It was like a different reality was overlaid your reality, and then the third missing time where you know you opened up a stall door, and next thing you know, you're in your car. I had talked. To when I in my post about I heard about these like inflection points mm -hmm. like these I don't want to get into the back rooms thing yeah but these like points where you can like maybe there's no way around it but like no clipping or whatever and like mm -hmm. you Basically, maybe something occurred in all three of those instances. Maybe there was a parallel reality. Maybe another me. I really don't. I, I really can't begin to even comprehend all the ways uh, that all of this comes together. Yeah. Because, I mean, it, it was horrifying. It, you know, it fucked me up for the better part of uh, like two to five years. I was... Whew, and still of to this course. day there's just this like inherent fear inside even just talking about it scares me because you know i have to go to sleep and it's yeah. you know 9 30 here and it's like when i talk about this it you know they, they, these triggers and it just yeah, yeah, i don't know right well, <laughs> andy i'm gonna put you in contact with a, a good friend of mine she's a she's a medicine woman a native medicine woman in canada you know she can help you maybe try to protect you from these uh night terrors these sleep terrors she has uh i'll actually send you what she actually just sent my my friend andrew um who is having those uh his uh his sleep paralysis uh, she she kind of gave him a, a couple of things to do. So it, it's up to you if you want to try it, you know, if you're open to it, I'll send it to you. And, uh, but I, I think this is something we need to, and I don't, and I don't mean to drag you through this again, but like, it's something I want to bring up in my, in my circle and, uh, see if anybody can come up with any answers or any possible ideas as to what this is. I, I do have a, you know, a, a lot of people who, who have experienced or talked to a lot of people who have a lot, a lot of experiences and maybe they can come up with some sort of answer that maybe fits better with, uh, with you than sleepwalking. Yeah, no. Yeah. And I, I really don't, I, I hope I didn't downplay like the severity of what occurred in all this by bringing that no. up. No, no, not at all. Um, like, I, I think for the most part, you're kind of, you know, you're kind of showing how ridiculous that some people are trying to explain away these crazy experiences. You know, it's kind of like, no, you didn't have that. You just were sleepwalking. Like, yeah, I, I, I think that's ridiculous. That I by no means that. think that that's what occurred. I mean, of I, course. It, I, I have had plenty of times where I try to rationalize it and convince myself that that's what took place. Mm -hmm. But when I really start thinking about, you know, like the nitty gritty and like the way everything kind of took place, I just, you know, nobody knows you like you do. Exactly. I totally and agree. I know in like my heart that, you know, I'd never had anything like that occur to me. And mm -hmm. that's what makes me believe more and more that whatever it was, was, you know, 
par paranormal or uh, unexplained or otherworldly yep. because, you know, I've been a, you know, nine to five working normal fucking guy who, you know, I think aliens are out there, but I, I don't even believe in ghosts pretty much. And here I am <laughs> explaining this you know, I, I'm a see it to believe it kind of guy. Yep. And I have this experience in my life that has now shown me that, you know, do I think Bigfoot's out there? Sure. I do. Do I think the dog band exists? Sure. Dude, you know, I still am trying to oops, come to on whether or not ghosts or how ghosts are perceived. Yeah. <laughs> you know i don't think that you but, necessarily... but like yeah and 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 i think it's okay i think it's really good to be skeptical i think it's very important that people approach things um with some skepticism because you know if you just go ahead and believe everything it's you have to have some questions you have to be like okay you know but and, and then i would say like your experience is just far from anything i've ever heard um it almost seems as like a collection of you know, like almost a collection of abduction, um, paranormal attack. Uh, pos I don't want to say possession, but it's kind of like this whole mix and almost with a little bit of like a Wendigo or a skinwalker almost in there too. This, this individual kind of is, uh, is, is coming off as some way. Yeah. I, I guess it would be important for me to say that, I don't think at any point mm -hmm. in the first two instances, I never had really felt anything that came across as like malevolent. Yeah. Okay. Um, like getting hurt. I mean, it's hard to say whatever it was, in my opinion, ultimately what it was to me was malevolent. Yeah. I think it had the ultimate goal of, T again taking something from me or hurting me or doing something involving me yeah um i think it hurt me or weakened me or instilled fear in me and i think fear is a catalyst that uh these things or things out there can use to latch on to to gain strength or grab a foothold inside of your well-being mm -hmm. so i think that what occurred at the trailer was an opportunity for it to to scare me into um, instilling like a, a level of belief that helps to um, materialize it on like this plane or whatever. And then yeah. I think at the hotel, there was a, an instance of like you said, um, I don't, I, I also don't want to call it possession because I was myself afterwards, yes. but I think that's whatever it was um, had, you know, created a foothold or something uh, with me. And then I think whatever had happened at the rest area was, um, was whatever it, its goal was it achieved. And yeah, I mean, I wish I could tell you that like, you know, I, I never feel happiness ever more ever again. And it's that simple. It's not, it's, I can't, there is, I can't, the worst part is I can't tell you what, I lost or if I lost anything at all, I just, again, I, I, if I could go back to one small thing that I brought up when I was like feeling sick and washing my face and getting ready to walk out of that rest area. Yeah. The, the first time I heard my name, um, it was like, like an old friend or like somebody like, it was very nice and like, Hey, you know, like and caring and like a level of compassion to it. Really? And I think because I didn't uh, respond to that in a, like a timely manner Yeah. that the second time it said my name, it didn't give me a choice. And compelled me to open the stall door and you know to go into the stall and it that or whatever happened and and you know my 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 memory of the 
instance was wiped away or whatever. It just 100%. Yeah. And then I, you know, come to, and it's hours later. And like I said, I've now, you know, you know, soiled myself and I, yep. I've, you know, bought, I've got like, you know, I, I don't recall eating. I think it was like this, like yellowy bile, watery yeah, like bile said. puke. And, you know, the car's running uh, and I, there's no fucking gas in the car. I, I, I don't know if I can tell you how much gas was there when I pulled in or if the car was, I, I just, there's. I, I, I have a question now. One last question here. Do you recall your clothes now when you were cleaning yourself off? Was there any buttons misaligned? Was there anything not clothes not put on properly as well? And and I don't mean that like in a bad way, but like it's it's it, it's something that happens sometimes with uh with missing time where you know it's like my my shirt is put on backwards. I'm not saying your shirt was on backwards, but maybe the buttons if it was a button up shirt, maybe the buttons were misaligned or something like that. Do you recall I, anything? I don't. Okay. Uh, I I wish I could you know, tell you what I thought, yeah. or I mean, what happened there, but all the only things that stick with me after leaving there is I just remember, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm a, I don't want to be a big tough guy or whatever, but I, I don't cry a lot, but I remember yeah. like pouting like a baby. Of course. And trying to, I was so fucked up on that drive home that I didn't even know if I was fucking driving home. Yeah. Like I, I just remember I had to stop a couple of times. I had to get out of the car. I had to, I was, I'd be hot. I couldn't breathe. I had to get out of the car and I literally, my heart was racing so fast. I had to pull over and like walk around the car and catch my fucking breath. I was like having panic attacks on the way home. I didn't, Jeez. I had no way of, I was having a hard time of, of rationalizing if mm -hmm. even what I was doing at that point in time was real. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to go into too much of like no, no, the, the following the, the, years and some of the repercussions of what came about of all that. Yeah. But like, you know, my mental state got pretty fucking wild for a little while. And I didn't, you know, of course, I, know if I was. I, I, was, I, I, was <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, you'd almost think like you would. You're losing your mind. Is is kind of what's cr coming across here? Like, am I losing my mind? Is, you know, you're having this. All these things happen. You're like, what? What's going on? Well, like you said, man. Like, uh, with like the Matrix or whatever. But like, like there the was glitch, even this like matrix. slight brief point in time where I didn't even know if I was still me. Really. Or if I was like. I don't even, I mean, we're starting to enter crazy territory here, but there was, I, like, I think we're already there. I think we're already there, there and like that's okay. Brief period. Yeah. When, like, you know, am I, am I who I was before what happened or am I just fucked up? <laughs> Fair enough. That, that, that is crazy. Andy, and I want to make sure, I want to make sure you know that. I, I believe what happened to you was legitimate, was not sleepwalking. I think there was something. And I'm going to do my best to try getting you an answer as to, I, I don't want to say an answer as because I don't think we'll ever, unfortunately, get an answer. But I can, you know, give you some ideas or something to look into. And and I will send you some information as well from uh, my, my, my good friend there, kind of like a mentor of mine um, yeah, no. to, to uh, maybe hey. help protect you. Any insight is appreciated. Mm -hmm. I just, um, you know, for everybody that's listening, you know, or, or will be listening, you know, I'm, I'm doing fine yeah. now. Um, you know, I've since, you know, gotten married and uh, building a family and all that stuff. But even now, like I was saying, and they're a little bit few and far between, but even now, you know, with my wife, I, like I was saying, I have these, and like you were saying with your um, past interviewee, I have mm -hmm. these uh, sleep paralysis bouts where 
I mean, I don't want to say they're necessarily related to what occurred. They could be, they might not be, but yeah. they are similar to what occurred when I was having, you know, issues. I just don't have like, or haven't had the scratches and the hives and yeah. God, God forbid something like that ever happens again. If it does, I'll let you know, but um well, yeah, and it, Andy, I want to say thank you so much for sharing your your experience. You know, it's a uh, it's really traumatic. That yours is a very traumatic experience. You know, with no real answers. Where I guess a lot of the experiences we we talk about, you know, a lot of people don't have the they don't get the answers they want. But at least, you know, I'm going to try my best to find you know get some information for you and uh and maybe try to put you in a different direction you know like give it to you to to send you in a direction you know maybe that maybe take a look at this or that avenue um but something definitely happened to you what it was is something that is uh you know we want to we need to figure out no man and i appreciate you giving me the opportunity to you know tell my story and maybe somebody out there had something happen similar and exactly that's that's exactly also you know that that's why i want this platform as well is not only to people to express their stories but it also gives people it, you your your experience is going to empower other people to come forward and be like yeah i had the same thing or I had something very similar and okay. then by connecting you're able to actually at least maybe get some answers other than talking to my mom, I yeah. spent the better part of a year and a half not being able to tell that story because I was afraid people thought I was just getting fucked by somebody in a rest area. Jeez. Yeah. And had to live with the thought that if I tell this story, people are going to be like, oh, you just sucked somebody off through a glory hole or some dumb shit. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. It's all fun and games. And like yeah. I said, you know, people are going to say what they're going to say, but, yeah. you know, that I, didn't want to come forward and say this because like as a guy you know there's so much stigma or whatever the word yep. is that is against like weakness and i would have never been more yes. vulnerable in my life than when what occurred it almost was a rape in a way of like my fucking mind yeah but 100 percent. It, it's like the vulnerability there prevented me from being able to say anything. And then when these people in power around you are saying, Oh, well, you're just fucking, you know, a dumb kid and you haven't been sleeping. And that's so much easier to swallow that pill than to come to terms with, you know, your truth and say, you know, here's this horrible thing that happened to me. Like, I don't want to say that I understand, you know, how other people feel, but like, you know, now, you know, why somebody might not report something or come yeah. forward because it's just so much easier to just let everything go by the wayside and say, you know what, you're right. I was just being stupid. Let's just you move on with life. And then you lose all that. And yeah, just, I, it, you know, at some point you wake the fuck up and realize that, you know, you can't live with yourself if you don't spit that truth out. It's fucking gnarly. It, it, it is. It is extremely gnarly, Andy. And and like I said, I want to say thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and, and, I, and I hope we're able to help you out with this. Uh, you know, I, I hope there's some way that we maybe we can connect you with someone else who had this sort of experience. And if not, you know, I'm going to I'm going to converse with uh, some other hosts. I, I know a couple who've had hundreds, thousands of guests, and I'm sure that they've had, uh, they, well, I'm hoping that they've had someone who's had an experience similar to this or be able to give me some answers that I can then pass on to you. Well, thank you, Rai, for just the opportunity um, for all of it. I just, I really appreciate you giving me the shot to come on here and no. uh, to tell it how it was and Thanks, man. I, I really it's do. My thank honor. You. My honor, Andy. I really appreciate that. So I want to say thank you for coming on here. Um, and I'm just going to, like I said, I'll put you down in the green room there. And I'm just going to do my closing here, okay? Roger that, man. Again, thank you so much. Thank you as well. Okay, everyone. That was Andy. Um, I almost feel like, you know, I had Ginger's story. And this is like Andy's story. Um, Ginger had her really intense experience with her abductions and uh, military experiments. And Andy's had some experiences that are just 
un, like truly unexplainable. Usually I have an idea that I can maybe, you know, give to someone, but I, I am, I'm speechless. I don't have anything. So if you are listening or watching this and you have had or ever had an experience like this, or you have possibly an idea saying it could be this and it's not sleepwalking that that's the, you know, the, their explanation is crazier than maybe what the truth could be. It's like, it's so ridiculous that this is sleepwalking. So if you have something, please, you know, send me a message and, uh, we can talk. Um, and on that, I just want to tell everybody, you know, keep your curiosities wandering and always keep the light lit. I look forward to our next adventure together as we navigate the mysteries that lie ahead. Until our paths cross again, keep your curiosity wandering and ensure the light remains lit. <laughs>